<laughs> well, I'll try and talk to you. You know, when uh, the Japanese never uh, realized what the submarine would do to them, and the thing about it is, this was never publicized to the Americans. In fact, it was kept classified until the 70s. Uh, for some reason, they don't know. But they played a very important part in World War II. And I'm going to read here some of the facts. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor December 7, 1941, they concentrated on a surface craft. Fortunately, our carriers were out to sea. They ignored the submarine base and they thought submarines would be no threat to them in the war to follow. This turned out to be a big mistake for them, but a blessing for us. During the 1,347 days of World War II, 465 skippers took 263 boats and 16,000 men out on 1,736 war patrols, sinking 1,178 merchant ships and 214 naval vessels. We also picked up several airmen that were shot down, including the first president, George Bush. Never in the annals of military history has there ever been a record of achievement to equal that of U.S. submarines during World War II. With 1.6% of all naval personnel, the submarine service sank over 55% of all Japanese ships, uh, including one-third of all Japanese men of war during World War II. Our kill would have been much better had, if we had better detonators on our torpedoes in the early part of the war. Lieutenant Commander Dudley Mush Morgan, the commanding officer of the Wahoo, proved to the top brass that we had faulty detonators. After the corrections were made, our kill went way down. The sad part is that Mush Morgan went down eternal patrol when the Wahoo went down in December 1943. Our losses were great. We lost 52 submarines and 3,617 men. 22% of all men that went out on patrol never returned. That was the highest mortality rate of any branch of the service. To quote Admiral Chester Nimitz, we will never forget it was our submarine that held the line against the enemy while our fleets replaced their losses and repaired their wounds. President Roosevelt said when he told the secrets of our success, our submarine, of our submarines, and said I can only echo the words of Winston Churchill, never have so many Hope so much to so feel. I kite I tinaka I told I got that wrong. We order for the Japanese leaders of Japan and said our greatest mistake the Japanese men in the war was not attacking the United States submarine. Now the Navy did keep this a secret, like I say. I would read the patrol reports of the jump. Uh, just a couple of days ago, and I see they were only declassified in 1972. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about life on a submarine. I was uh, seven, I was 15 when they bombed Pearl Harbor. I thought I would never, never be, uh, uh, the war would be over in a, a few weeks. We could whip that little island of Japan because everybody knew what happened. Well, when I turned 17, several of my friends had gone into the Navy, and I wanted to go in the Navy. I didn't want to go in the Army, so I started bugging my parents. And uh, I was 17, I was on June 6, 1943. 
Well, we said finally, if you stay home till Christmas, we'll sign. You had, you had a sign when you was under 18 and you could get your parents to sign. So uh, I uh, went in, in January 11th, I think the date was. It was the early part of January. And I went to boot camp. I went to, uh, uh, after boot camp uh, and my boot leave, I went out to uh, California and uh, was there. We, you're only supposed to be there three or four days and you're gone. But my, somehow my pay records were messed up and uh, I was there a couple of months, I must have been. I got on the tube ship, went to Pearl Harbor, was there and went they took uh, our whole uh, bunch up to uh, Barbara's Point because they did not room in OGU at Pearl Harbor. And uh, we lived about two days, and all of a sudden, it was after supper that night, uh, this uh, guy came up and yelled, Morrell Campbell, pack your sea bait, you're going. Just the two of us. Why, I don't know. They took us down to uh, the submarine base, and put us aboard the USS Holland, submarine tender. Well, when we got there, the, uh, they put us in the deck crew as passengers, not as a member of the crew, but passengers. And because the boats had said, well, why are they taking on passengers? We're not leaving for a couple of months. We gotta go and die back. Well, it was around the end of May, we left, we went to Midway. We got on Midway, and then uh, they assigned all, all the bunch there to different uh, places. And there, Campbell and I were left standing there. Just one guy, come an officer, come over and ask us if we were submarine service. Yeah, we might as well get off the island somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've ever seen Midway Island, it's about a mile wide and two miles long, and nothing but a coral beach. Uh, the coral, there was nothing there. So we were there, and I was there. They put us in a relief crew. Now, I'll explain a little bit about the relief crew. When a submarine come off war patrol, they uh, would, uh, uh, each compartment, uh, the head of the compartment would make a list of everything that was needed to be done. And uh, so they, uh, the crew, they left the boat and went to R&R. &R. If it was in uh, <coughs> Hawaii, they were in Pearl Harbor, they was, uh, went to the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Wakensky Beach for two weeks. If they was in Australia, they went to, they had a couple hotels downtown Australia, which was the best of the you could get. Anyway, uh, we was, uh, there in that relief crew, we during that two weeks, the relief crew had to repair all anything that needed repair, clean the boat up, and get. We had two weeks to get that boat ready for the next patrol. Well, they, after that, they were supposed to transfer off about 20 percent of the crew. Now the guys in relief crew were all submarine men. They, some of them were just out of submarine school. Some of them had made war, several war patrols. Some of them made a few war patrols. But they were all submarine men drawing the submarine pay. By the way, we were the best paid of any uh, fighting in the service. We got a 20% sea pay and a 50% on top of that hazard of duty, which was monitored 80% over our base pay. So we, we were pretty well paid for our duty. Anyway, uh, they would take uh, about 20% of the, of the crew off and take another percent. And then the, the submarine would take about, uh, all be about two weeks it would take for, for testing uh, out everything and uh, loading for the next patrol. Well, after I was on midway then until the first of of the 1st of December, and they went, our uh, the squadron had lost so many boats that we had two relief crews on the base. They put us on the, uh, half of us on the tender, and we went back to Pearl Harbor. And uh, we've done this, by the way, on the 40th, going back 
that pretty famous tens of maybe a lot of meetings were. We was in Pearl Harbor for, uh, well, it must have been the first part of February. We left on the first of December, and it must have been the first part of February. We got on the Denver Gilmore, and we went to Lisbon, Australia, as passengers. And our home relief crew. Then we got on the train there, and we went by train to uh, Perth, which is completely across the country. Uh, it was com completely across the country by uh, train. Now that's an experience that takes a long time to tell, so we won't go into that. But uh, because we were going to desert probably almost a week. Dropped off. Yeah. Bring it down a little bit further. Okay. Good thing you got fun.